Pronounce you Kosovo, Mr. Besim Aliti here. And uh, Tokyo was the second games for Kosovo. So for the first time you have participated in Rio 2016, immediately won a gold medal. And now in Tokyo, you doubled with two gold medals. And actually all three medals came from judo, from three different female judoka. So um, uh, what's the story about judo in Kosovo? And maybe you can tell us some background then how the sport is important for your country and and how did you end up with the successes in the Olympics? Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank you, the European Olympic Committees and the Slovak Olympic Committee for organizing this seminar. And uh, second of all, thank you. stories especially when it comes to the panel which is named the success story so we're also proud to be part of this of this panel um as you said uh, peter two olympics three medals uh, all won by female athletes uh in sport of judo uh, but also i think it's very important to emphasize that we are the youngest noc in this european olympic committee's family and uh rio was our first olympics so um for us it was not just important to participate and create results for the matter of having results, but for the matter of creating role models and for the matter of creating athlete heroes who will uh, motivate, motivate and inspire the next generations to continue this path and uh, to um, become successful and to have their uh, dream that uh, in front of their face, there is somebody who can achieve it from the same country and that it's achievable actually. Uh, I think it's uh, also very interesting that it comes from the from the same sport. But I think that Tokyo proved that the medal in Rio was not by accident. That actually there was a system behind it, and that uh, our coaching level in terms of judo is, and especially the coach Driton Kuka, who is I think also famous as one of the best judo coaches in the world, training with a lot of other countries and especially in the regional countries. I know they have many camps in in Slovenia, etc showed that the system behind it proves to be successful and that uh, we will definitely not stop in Tokyo but continue further. So when it comes to the to the Olympic Committee of Kosovo, I think uh, that our role together with uh, with the role of the of the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport in Kosovo is to create an environment where results are possible, to create infrastructure, uh, and to create conditions where they could further develop. And I think this role was well done by the Olympic Committee of Kosovo, where uh, we have uh, supported the elite athletes, and this is the number of 20 athletes which were chosen after the Rio Olympics, with 20 scholarships. Uh, uh, part of it financed by the Olympic Committee, part of it financed by the Olympic Solidarity. And I think for a small countries like Kosovo, having... Uh, financial support from the IOC, Olympic Solidarity, and also EOC is very important. And although it might be irrelevant for some big country, maybe Italy or France with huge budgets and, and big delegations, for small countries, having this support is very important and it actually directly impacts the conditions where athletes train. Um, so this is the first thing. We created uh, opportunities to give scholarships to those elite athletes. And also uh, we have provided in, in these four years but actually became five, and I'll also comment on that. So in these four years, we have created possibility for those elite athletes to have uh, 80 days of training camps in the country and out of the country, uh, financed by the, uh, subsidized by the Kosovo Olympic Committee. This was especially important in the era of COVID because many of those camps had to be isolated. And I think all the countries faced this, that basically the costs went up and the uh, the whole uh, the whole story became very difficult, and I think uh, Kosovo Olympic Committee has done a very has played a very good role here in supporting the the preparation camps. Uh, in addition to that, together with the ministry, we have a program called Olympic Hopes, which is a strategic approach of finding those talents in the age of 15 to 21 and supporting them and bringing their careers closer to the next Olympics. So this is not let's say Olympic Hopes financed in the period 2016-2020 have been preparing for Paris 2024 and Los Angeles 2028. And I think for us, it's very important to have this strategic approach and to identify talents very early because we are talking about a country, and I think San Marino is a great example here. We are talking about small countries and Kosovo is also relatively small with less than 2 million population. So we are not talking about 
a big pool of talents. We are talking about a very small pool where we need scientific approach. And I think this is the most important message that Professor Antonio gave today when we uh, identify our talents. So just take the sensitive phases. In some of the sports, those sensitive phases are very early. Let's say if you look at gymnastics, you need to identify the talent in the age of four, four and five. And if you don't do that, the time has gone, which means uh, we need this approach. And I think the next step of our strategic approach in terms of coaching will be to implement more of scientific research in our program. And this will be done through Olympic Academy, which has just recently been um, founded in Kosovo as part of the Olympic experts to train our coaches to give them this uh, background of scientific research so that our trainings can be based on that and that the results in the next Olympics will never be uh, by accident, but it will be a continuity of good work and good preparations. And I think that we really need to work on that, that very well. Also, I'd like to comment on what Professor Antonio said, that we had five years. For some, it might have been advantage, but I was impressed when he said that 65% of the athletes reach their peak at the Olympics. So this is really impressive. It means that there was really a scientific research behind it. Because if we look at the preparation of the athletes, they all timed their peak for the four years microcyclists. And then suddenly an extra year came, which means that the basic preparation period might have been too early or the specific might have been too late. And I think this was a big challenge for the athletes as well as we will have a big challenge now for Paris because uh, we are talking about less than three years now. And I think that in uh, looking at it anthropologically and uh, from all the uh, perspectives of the preparations of the athlete, especially the physical one, we need to be ready to um, give them an approach which allows them that in three years they achieve something that they would achieve in four. And this will definitely not be easy. Also, one very important perspective will be the psychological perspective and the nutrition perspective, which we in Kosovo have to work a lot and learn from bigger NOCs like Italy or France and, and, and all other NOCs to learn, take lessons and transfer this knowledge to our coaches, which are the most important. So as I said, uh, the results come from these coaches, from the system, from the work in the clubs. But Olympic Committee has the role to create conditions. And I think this will continue to be our role. So for the preparations for Paris 2024, we will enlarge this number of, uh, of Olympic scholarships for, for the elite athletes. So we will have 22 at least. And we'll... the Olympic hopes will also enlarge this number uh, so that we have a better opportunity for the next Olympics to create Olympic candidates. Um, I think we are all being part of the Olympic family is not just uh, not just a privilege, but it's it's really a big obligation because because we have an obligation towards the most important stakeholders in our in our family, and these are the athletes. So if we don't do the the proper preparations and conditions for the athletes, we are not fulfilling our role. And I think as Kosovo Olympic Committee, we will do our best that in this next three years period, we will create more candidates, we will create more diversity in terms of sports to try and, and have better Olympic chances in, in, in other sports. And also, I think that we will do our best to inspire our young nation with uh, Olympic heroes to have uh, that we will continue to impress the Olympic world with the medals. Thank you, Basim. Uh, thanks to all the presenters. And now it's time for the answer. And we actually have two questions here on the web app. So the first one, first question from the NOC of Malta. And the question goes to San Marino and to Kosovo. Um, asking if the great results at the Olympics had actually translated into the increase in participation in, in sport at the grassroots. Well, uh, as I said before, I believe that uh, the, the... What about in Kosovo? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, to tell exactly if that uh, has increased or not. To tell in exact numbers, I don't think it, will be, it would be serious when we don't have a research about that. 
I can just assume, and I assume that yes, it has increased due to the social media engagement, maybe uh, due to the more activity in the School Sport Federation of Kosovo and due to the interest in clubs where we, let's say, have direct communication with the federations and many federations, especially in the combat sports due to these medals, uh, they testify that the numbers have grown in their clubs. So I can assume that definitely, yes, it has impacted, but I think that we will have to make uh, a deep research about this in order to have to have correct numbers in the future.